Hi, this is Miss Linton, and this is uh, AP Seventh Period Support. Say hi. Hi. They're wonderful hi. and excellent. I love them very much. I want to clarify one thing. First period got this. I said, "Oh, you better talk to your bio buddies because the lab is due on Friday. Wednesday. Wednesday." Yeah, because that made sense to me since we finished collecting the data on Friday. But turns out I was super nice on my calendar. And I said it wasn't actually due till this Friday. Friday. So I just want to make sure everybody knows that. Okay? You all right? <laughs> I am <a> seizure. <laughs> now, if you already finished it, if you already finished it, that's hashtag cool beans because you don't have to worry about it, right? You can do other things this week. Okay. So before we go any farther, I gave you a scenario because I said on your quiz, you're going to have to calculate water potential. And you'll have the constants that equation sheet that you would need and we know that water potential is a factor of what two things? Soil potential. potential plus pressure potential. Okay, so when we think about pressure potential, we think about what? What do we think about? Trigger pressure? That's exactly what I think about. And who is creating that trigger pressure? And the cell wall is doing what? Pushing back. Pushing back against. Yeah, if this was a vacuole. Right? Now, what would be pushing out? Because what's doing? Water is moving in, right? It's going from a high photonic to a hyper, right? Because water must flow from the hypo. And it's going to. Guys? There's just too many of us. Just I have to talk unless I, you know, have coffee time. Alan, your haircut looks super cute in a creepy teacher way. So water flows in. Water must flow from the hypo into the hypertonic solution. But eventually, and plants, anything that has a cell wall, this is unique to because the wall can push back, right? Right, okay. Now, um, we wanted in our equation, we said we want to take pressure potential out when we put it in a solution where it doesn't gain and it doesn't lose any water, right? That's, did you get your haircut today? Super cute, not creepy teacher way. Okay, who else got their haircut? Super cute, super cute, super cute. They are all very handsome in a non creepy teacher way. Ladies, any ladies get haircuts? I got you, my hair is so We're way off task right now. Okay, come back to me. Like ADD teacher. Look, there goes a rabbit. Okay. Or chicken. <laughs> okay, come back to me. So we want to go and be able to take this out. And we say when this, when we put a cell, like a plant cell, into a beaker of blood, apparently, where it doesn't gain or lose any mass, then we know our pressure potential is. Zero. So now we're just dealing with solute potential, and we know the equation for solute potential. You don't even need an equation sheet, formula sheet, because you know that. So if you can solve for solute potential, you know the water potential at, at that particular molarity, right? Okay, so let's figure that out. So the I, negative is just negative. What does the I stand for? Ionization, and if this is um, uh, sucrose, then the ionization is just one. Yeah. If it was salt, it'd be something different. What's the C? No, that's R. The molar concentration of the solution we have it in, where it doesn't gain or lose, right? Where it doesn't gain or lose that molarity. What did I tell you before I left the room? I gave you some molarity. Zero point eight two. And that's moles, right? Right? Moles per liter, right? Molar is moles per liter. Okay? Then what's the R? Pressure yes, and what is that? Liters per bar per moles per Kelvin. Good. All right, our plant is going away. All right, and then temperature. Temperature is in what? Degrees Kelvin. What did I give you in Celsius? 17, and then you have to add Okay, 17, and you have to add what? So 10, carry the 1, 9, 290 Kelvin. Do you agree with that? Yes. I do too. 
Okay, then we just have to do, we can cancel out Kelvin, Kelvin, liters, liters, moles, moles. What are we left with? Bars. Bars. Then you just need to do the math, right? So you're going to take 1 times 0.82 times 0 0.0831 times 290 and negative. What did you get? Okay. I will take it only to the tenth. What do you think it is? Okay. So it's negative. Don't miss that on your exam, right? Negative 19.8 bars. Yes. I can't hear. Are we only going to be dealing with sugars for the... I would tell you, I would say if they're going to do one, if they did do something like salt, just know that you're going to put two. I'm just going to tell you that it's going to iodize into sodium and chloride. Okay. I think mean, that's the only ones they would ever give you. Thank you. Yes? Would the R be different for salt? Or no. Uh, so it's salt. Just pressure, yeah. What else? Yes? So the R in the like pressure represents what? Pressure what we look in the holes? What's R? This is just a constant. This, this is, this R is a constant. Yeah, it's a way for you to put, to complete this equation so we can relate one of these to the other. Stitches it all together, this constant. Pressure constant, yes. I would call, yeah, you couldn't, the only other way to change this problem for you is to give you data, which would be a really good exam question, is to give you data have you graph the data, do your best made line, find where it crosses zero, and then you would have that, doing that graph, right, of that data. So you did this, you had plus, you had minus, and you had the zero line, right? And if you had, bless you, if you had points plotted out here and then you did your best made line through it, right, and you, I don't know if that's the best thing. And you went down and you went to see what was the molarity, right? That molarity right there is what is right here, which is right here. Right? That's what we did with our graph. Are you absorbing that? Do you need me to explain it again? Yes. Okay. I'm going to do a new page. You have beakers. of solution. Let's call this um, 0.0 molar. Let's call this 0.2 molar, 0.4, and 0.6 molar solution. Are you okay so far? We put in chunks of potato. Okay, we weighed the potato before and after and the change in mass here in the zero molarity was plus 10 grams and let's say at 0.2 it was plus four grams and the change I'm measuring the change before and after here it was minus six grams and here it was minus 10 grams you with me so far okay so then I make a graph and I say okay here's Zero molarity, here's 0 0.2, 0 0.4, 0 0.6. How far did I go? Is that as far as I went? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, and what's my biggest difference? 10. So this is 10 plus, this is 10 minus. Are we all right? Yeah. Here's 5 and 5. All right, let's plot it. At zero, what was I at? Plus 10 grams. At point two, I was at what? Plus four. Okay. At point four, what was I at? Negative six. And then at point six molar, what was I at? Minus ten. So here's our zero line right here. That zero line. Here's my best made line. Okay, and then I come down. Oh, that's pretty good. And so what do you think the molarity where it doesn't gain or lose mass would be at? 
so at point three, so if I'm trying to calculate the water potential, okay, at point three, and let's say the, the temperature is uh, 27 degrees Celsius, okay, of all those, the water potential is a factor of the solute potential plus the pressure potential. At point three, I can rule this guy out, so I only have to deal with this. Because at point three, it's not going to gain, and it's not going to lose. We all right there? So at point three, I can say that the solute potential is equal to, or the water potential is equal to the solute potential, and that's the negative ICRT. Let's do that one. Do this one. Do you want me to stop this review after we do this calculation so we just have a water potential review just all by itself? Yeah, I'm going to. <laughs> no, Miss Lynn. I asked you, but I really didn't. Yes. Um, let's say you have like one percent of the change on the other like minus. Yeah, like those two types of percent. However, you set up your graph. So, however, you set up your graph. Okay. I did it in grams here, but you don't see. No, Hang on to your question. All right. Do this with me. Okay? So we're saying water potential equals negative ICRT. So our water potential is negative 1. Exactly. What's our C? 0.3 moles per liter, right? Because that's molar concentration. Mm -hmm. Then what? Perfect. And then what do I need to do? What temperature did I say? 27. <laughs> How did I do that? Okay, you ready? So then I cancel Kelvin, where did Kelvin go? Kelvin, Kelvin, moles, moles, liters, liter. I'm left with bars. So what is this equal to? Negative 7.475. Yep, negative 7.5 bars. And on your, on your exam, this is what you would click in. Negative 7.5, done. How do you feel about that? Better now? Would you have to say bars afterwards? What did I just say, literally? Just that. Right. <laughs> what else? Yes. Um, Listen. Shh. Go. So if you have, so when you have 0% change in growth, the pressure potential is zero. So if you have like 5% change in growth or like 6% change in growth, would the pressure potential be 5 or 0.5? Well, it just depends. You just have to stay consistent with whatever you do here. I don't care how you graph this, whatever you're graphing it in, all you're using that graph is to find the molarity, right? Yeah. I don't care how you graph it, right, as long as you're consistent in your graphing. Okay. Because being consistent in your graphing is going to allow you to make that line, which is going to ultimately lead you to your molarity. So you're always looking for 0% change of growth? Yes, okay. because zero at zero is when I can take the pressure potential out. I'm trying to get rid of one of my variables because water potential is a factor of two things. The solute potential, the solute potential is saying come in to me, come in, right? Okay, so it's wanting the water to come in and I'm trying to, and pressure potential pushes out. Well, if I want to find the water potential, I need to get rid of one of those variables. So the variable I'm going to get rid of is pressure potential. And where it doesn't gain or lose right there, at that point, it's not gaining or losing. That's the point where I can calculate solute potential, and then the solute potential is equal to the water potential because we got rid of pressure. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. Feeling strong? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Okay. At some point, I lost on this recording. I'm not 100% sure where. It's trying to reconnect right now. All right, now, while I'm waiting for that to reconnect, okay, timed out. Okay, somewhere along the line, the doseri timed out, so I just want to summarize it um, just to bring closure on this topic. 
So just to make sure, because I'm not 100% sure where it timed out. We did, we wanted to know the water potential of a potato. So we put that potato, we cored it, right? And we, what did we do to those potato cores? Massed them. And we did that with several different groups of potatoes. Then we took those potatoes and put them in different, what? Molarities of sucrose. We let them sit for 24 hours. We took those potatoes out and we weighed them again. And if we did it where I just gave some hypothetical, that at zero molarity it gained 10 grams, we would have done percent change difference, right? But that's fine. Let's say it gained 10 grams, gained four grams, at 0.4 it lost minus six grams, at 0.6 it lost minus 10 grams. Once I have that data, all I have to do is graph it. From that graph, I can determine where it crosses zero, right, percent change. At that point, my water potential is only a factor of the solute potential because the pressure potential will be zero. zero. I know the equation for solute potential is what? Negative, negative ICRT. I know every one of those now. Negative one, one because it doesn't ionize, C was 0.3 molar. That I determined from the graph. That molarity got determined from the graph. R is a constant. Temperature, I had to take the temperature. We said it was 27 degrees. We had to convert it to Kelvin. We added 273. Boom. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Got it? Yeah. All right. So let me pause that. Hope you're having a great day. Have a piece of toast if you're tired. <laughs> you know, make good choices.